During the Second World War, warmth was not a comfort issue. It was, honestly, a matter of operational survival. Troops stationed in Eastern Europe the Ardennes, the Aleutians, and the Italian Apennines faced cold severe enough to disable weapons, immobilize vehicles, and incapacitate men. Field stoves existed, but fuel was limited, and shelters were, you know, poorly insulated. Commanders quickly realized that burning more fuel was not the answer. The breakthrough came from a simple principle. Heat already produced was being wasted. The stove shield trick that emerged did not increase fire size or fuel consumption. It redirected heat that was already escaping, effectively doubling usable warmth inside tents, huts and improvised shelters. The problem was radiant heat loss, not insufficient firepower. Most World War II field stoves were compact steel boxes designed for portability and durability. While efficient at combustion, they radiated heat in all directions, including into walls, snowbanks and open air, where it did no useful work. Soldiers observed that standing behind the stove felt warmer than standing beside it. This led to a critical realization. Heat direction mattered as much as heat generation. By controlling where radiant heat traveled, the same stove could, you know, warm twice the usable space. The stove shield was a reflective barrier, not an insulator. The shield was not designed to trap heat inside the stove. It was placed behind or around it to reflect radiant heat back into the living area. The key was reflectivity, not thickness. Radiant heat travels in straight lines. When it strikes a reflective surface, it bounces back rather than being absorbed. By placing a metal shield behind the stove, soldiers redirected heat that would have been lost through tent walls or wooden hut panels. This immediately increased perceived warmth without increasing fire intensity. To apply this today, any reflective metal surface placed behind a heat source can improve efficiency. A simple sheet of aluminum or steel positioned a short distance from a stove reflects heat forward while allowing airflow to prevent overheating. Spacing between stove and shield created a secondary heat reservoir. The shield was never pressed directly against the stove. This spacing prevented heat damage to the shield while increasing convection efficiency. The shield itself warmed and became a secondary radiant surface. Modern users can replicate this by maintaining an air gap between stoves and reflective panels. The goal is not contact, but controlled proximity that allows air to move and heat to spread. Many World War II shelters lost enormous amounts of heat through vertical exhaust pipes. By placing reflective shields near the base of the pipe, soldiers reduced radiant heat loss at the hottest section of the system. This did not block airflow or increase smoke risk. It simply delayed heat loss long enough to be useful. One of the most important outcomes of this trick was, well, fuel conservation. With heat redirected inward, fires could actually be kept smaller while still maintaining the same interior temperature. 
this reduced fuel consumption, smoke output, and, you know, detection risk in combat zones. This is a critical lesson for modern off-grid heating, where, honestly, fuel supply is limited. You know, the stove shield trick became widespread because it relied on salvage and ingenuity. Soldiers shared the idea informally, and soon enough, engineers adopted it officially in winterized camps. Really, it was only a change in how heat was handled. For modern application, this means that even basic heating setups can be improved dramatically with thoughtful heat redirection rather than uh, costly upgrades. The physics behind the trick remain unchanged. Radiant heat still behaves the same way it did back in 1944. And, well, convection still depends on airflow and spacing. Reflection still works regardless of technology level. Modern stoves benefit from this trick just as much as World War II field units did. What made the method successful was not innovation, but observation. Soldiers paid attention to where warmth went and corrected inefficiency with available materials. That mindset remains valuable today. You know, this forgotten wartime lesson really does belong in modern survival knowledge. The World War II stove shield trick, well, it doubled warmth not by producing more heat, but by respecting how heat actually moves. It transformed inadequate heating into, you know, effective shelter warmth through understanding rather than just excess. If this deep dive into wartime engineering and practical heat management added value to your understanding of history and survival design, do consider subscribing to In the Beginning. Share this episode with fellow history enthusiasts and help preserve knowledge that truly proved itself when failure was simply not an option.